What's going on everyone? This is Kevin here, coming at you with Samsung Galaxy A14 Tips and Tricks and Hidden Features. Now this is the 4G LTE version of the phone, and stay tuned if you want to learn how to get the most out of the device. Now the first thing I want to do is show you a quick and easy way to access the camera app here on the phone and you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system and this is already enabled by default and this is using a feature called side key. So all you have to do is just double press on the power button and it'll pull up the camera app. So there we go, there's me right there through the camera and again you can do this from anywhere throughout the operating system. You can do it from the app drawer for example. So just double press on the power button and the camera app will now appear. Now you can actually further customize that to pull up any app of your choosing. So instead of having it pull up the camera, you can have it pull up any app that's on the device. So pull down the shade, go to the gear icon to go to the settings, go to search, type in side, and you'll see right there side key. So go there and you'll see that by default, it does indeed enable quick launch camera, but instead you can go down here to open app and then go to the gear icon to choose from any app on the device. So I'm gonna pick Instagram. So now with that enabled, I can just double press in the power button and it'll pull up Instagram. So that's really convenient. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to customize the lock screen on the Galaxy A14. So by default, this is how the lock screen looks. You get the time, the date, and then your notifications will be here. And then you can also go to the phone or camera. Now to customize this, hold down on the lock screen then from there, put in your pin code, and then you'll have the ability to change quite a few things here. So first thing is you can tap on the clock and you can choose from some different clock styles. You can actually have no clock if you don't want one at all, but you can pick an analog clock. You can also pick different styles here as well. And then in addition to that, you can modify the fonts. So if you want maybe a more bolded font or a more artistic font, you can make those adjustments right there. You can also change the color as well of the text. So that's really helpful. So a lot of different customizations that you can make there related to the clock on the lock screen. Now, in addition to that, there's an option right here for contact information. So if you happen to lose your phone, for example, maybe you wanna have a phone number on there of a trusted friend or family member, or maybe even your email address so they can contact you. So for this example, I'm just gonna type in my name, Kevin Breeze. I'm gonna to go to done, and then from there, I can go to done up here. The changes are now applied and you can see it does indeed say my name here at the bottom of the lock screen. So that's really helpful. Now, in addition to that, there's one other thing I wanna show you. There are quick launches here for the phone app and camera app, which is really helpful, but you can actually modify those as well. So you can replace those with any app that's on the phone. Some of them do require accessing the phone already with a pin code or your fingerprint, but a few of them you can just pull up right away. So for this example, I'm gonna swap out the phone icon for the flashlight, and then I'm gonna go to done. I'll let those changes apply. And then now I can just swipe over from that corner and the flashlight will now be brought up. Now the next thing I wanna do is show you how to take a screenshot with the Samsung Galaxy A14 4G LTE. And it's very simple. All you have to do is hold the volume down and power button for about a second. So just like that. And we now took the screenshot. Then from there, you can edit it, share it, or it will save to the gallery automatically. Now with the Galaxy A14, we have a very large display here. And that's certainly helpful for many things, such as watching video content. But in other ways, it can be a bit cumbersome. For example, when using the phone with just one hand, it's pretty much impossible to reach all portions of the operating system. Now, thankfully, Samsung has come up with a very cool solution to this, and it's called one-handed mode. Now, to get to one-handed mode, you're going to pull down the shade here, go to the settings, go to search, type in one-handed, and you'll see right there one-handed mode, so go there, then go here, and then enable that. Now, there are two different options. There's gesture and button. I prefer button, it makes a lot more sense to me. So enable that, and then from there, all you have to do is just double press on the home button here, and it'll now enter one-handed mode. And essentially with one-handed mode, you have a mini version of the entire operating system. So you can reach all portions of it, which is why this feature works. But in addition to that, if you wanna move it to another side, you can switch that over. It's definitely a lot more convenient on the left side if you're left-handed. You can also move it up and down, 
which is helpful too. And then you can also adjust the size of the actual one-handed mode window itself. So grabbing onto the corner here, I can now resize things. I can make things smaller, or if I want to, I can make things larger as well, so I can get the ideal size for one-handed mode. Then from here, to exit out of one-handed mode, all you have to do is just tap outside of it, and then now things are back to normal. Now with the Galaxy A14, we do have the traditional Android 3 button navigation enabled here by default. And I know for many people that is what they prefer. However, we also have the option here for gesture-based navigation. And if you've never used that before, then I definitely recommend giving that a try. Now to get to gesture-based navigation, you're going to pull down the shade, go to the settings, go to search, type in nav, let that load, and you'll see right there navigation bar. So go there. Then from there, go down here. And then you'll see a variety of different options. Now the first option is to actually flip around the back button and recent apps buttons. So you can go here and it'll now move the back button to the left side and recent apps to the right side. So that could be helpful if you prefer that configuration. But then also up here, we have the option for swipe gestures. So if you go there and enable that, you'll now see the three buttons turns into a small line here at the bottom. And then swiping up takes you home Swiping partially up takes you to recent apps, and then swiping from the side takes you back. Now in addition to that, you can go here for more options, and then there's actually this cool ability here called swipe from bottom. So if you enable that, we now get three lines at the bottom instead, and then basically swiping up from the button on the left side takes you to your recent apps. Swiping up from the center button takes you home, and then swiping from the right line here takes you back. Now the next thing I want to do is show you how to hide apps with the Samsung Galaxy A14. So what I mean by hiding apps is that if you don't want a certain app to show up on your home screen and also not even in your app drawer, you can hide it. So go to your app drawer to get to this. You're going to go to the three dots in the upper right corner. Then from there, go to settings. Then from there, go to hide apps and home and app screens. And then from there, you have a list of every app installed on the device. So for this demonstration, I'm going to hide Facebook. So tap on that app, and you'll see right there it's in Hidden Apps. Go to Done, and then now, it doesn't matter where you are, whether you're on the home screen or if you are in the app drawer, Facebook is now nowhere to be found. Then from there, to bring it back, go back to the same place, go to those three dots, go to Settings, go to Hide Apps, and then you'll see it's there in your hidden apps. Remove it, go to done. And then now it doesn't put it back on the home screen, but you'll see it once again in the app drawer. Now the next thing I wanna show you is how to use split screen and also pop-up view. So basically what we're gonna do for this demonstration is to have a app up top here and an app on the bottom. And what I'm gonna do is have a YouTube video up top and then a web browser here at the bottom. So I already have pulled those up and they're in my recent apps. And basically from there, go to your recent apps button, then go over to the apps that you want to place in that configuration. So I'm gonna start with YouTube here. I'm gonna hold down on the logo. And then from there, I can drop it there to open it. And then now I have a choice of the second app. And then what I'm gonna do is then go down to Chrome and it'll pull that up. So now I have the YouTube video up here and then I have the web browser down here. Now what's cool as well is that I can actually adjust this so I can have a smaller portion for the video and a larger portion for the browser and then the video will actually take up the entire top portion here. What's going on so that's really good. So that's a nice way to multitask. Then to have one of these apps take over completely, you just swipe up or down all the way and then there we go. And then for pop-up view, what you're gonna do is go to your recent apps, grab the app, and then drop it in the middle. And then now the app will pop up here in pop-up view. So essentially you have a mini app window above the whole operating system here. So then from there, you can actually shrink it down. You can have a little bubble icon there in the corner or on the side. So you can easily access that anytime you want to to pull up that pop-up window, which is really cool here. And then to exit out of this, you just tap on the X. But it's really cool that we even get pop-up view with a lower end smartphone like this one. The next thing I'm gonna do is show you a lot of different abilities in the motions and gestures settings. So we're gonna pull down the shade, go to the gear icon, go to search, type in motions, and you'll see right there, motions and gestures. So go there. Now some of these are already enabled by default, but many of them are not. And the first one is lift to wake. So turn on the screen when you pick up your phone. So we'll give that a try. So the screen's off. 
I'm gonna now pick up the phone, and there we go, it turned on the screen. And then there's these two, double tap to turn on screen and then double tap to turn off screen. So basically for double tap to turn off screen, you can tap on an open area on the home screen and it'll turn off the screen. And then to turn on the screen, you can double tap anywhere and then it'll turn it on. And then finally, this one's really cool, finger sensor gestures. So if you go there, basically by swiping down on the fingerprint sensor, it'll lower down the notification shade. So one swipe will take you to notifications, and then a second swipe on that will pull up all of your quick toggles. Also in this advanced features area, we have dual messenger. So this one's pretty interesting. So there are certain apps out there that don't allow multi-account support. So for example, Snapchat, you can only be signed into one Snapchat account at a time, so you can't switch between accounts. Same thing for Facebook and Messenger for that matter. So basically any app that's compatible with Dual Messenger will show up here. And then by enabling these, it'll install a second copy of that app so you can sign in with your second account. So that's a really awesome feature and certainly something that you cannot do on iOS. Now moving on, I wanna show you how to get more battery life out of the Samsung Galaxy A14. So we'll be using a feature called Power Saving Mode. So go to the settings, go to search, type in, power, saving, and you'll see it right there. So by default, this is not enabled, of course, but if you do enable it, it'll cut out a lot of different background tasks. And then essentially with this enabled, the phone will be running, doing kind of the bare minimum things that it typically does. But in exchange for that, you'll be getting better battery life. Now, I wouldn't have power saving mode enabled at all times because the phone will just not work as well as it potentially could. But if you find yourself in a situation where you know you won't be able to recharge it anytime soon, then I would recommend enabling this so that your phone won't run out of battery. Now, there are additional power saving customizations you can make. For example, you can have it limit CPU speed to 70% and also have it limit apps and home screen. So lots of different ways here to further prolong the battery life on your device. And then finally, I wanna show you some different display options for the Galaxy A14. So pull down the shade here, go to the settings, then from there, go down to display. Now the first one here is light and dark modes. So by default, the phone is set to light mode, but you can turn on dark mode. Now this comes in handy, especially at night, or maybe you're at a movie theater, and you can actually go to the dark mode settings to pick a schedule for this, if that is something you wanna have enabled and disabled on a regular basis. We also have eye comfort shield. So with that enabled, it'll limit blue light, which especially comes in handy later in the day, and you can actually further set the color temperature. So if you want it to be even kind of darker, you can have that, or closer to the blue light, Default, you can have that too. And then you can also set a schedule for Eye Comfort Shield as well. You can even have it enable or disable from sunset to sunrise. And then finally, there's an option here for font size and style. So if you want larger fonts throughout the system, you can enable that. You can also change the actual font itself. You can download fonts and you can also bold the fonts. So lots of different customizations so that things look exactly how you want them to look. So this concludes my tips and tricks video for the Samsung Galaxy A14 4G LTE. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new today. And if you did, definitely give it a thumbs up. But this is Kevin and I'll see you in the next one. Take care and have a great rest of your day.